Welcome to Stories We Love. Stories We Love is about stories we love, where we get to interview extraordinary people who are doing wonderful things for the world. And we want to inspire you, warm your heart, open your mind, give you new ideas, fun things that you could try. Today, I feel honored to interview Dr. John Jaquish, who has created many things that I love. But the thing I want to start talking about first is something that he created for his mom called OsteoStrong. And osteo means bone, and strong means strong. So welcome, uh, John. Come, uh, welcome. Hey, Gary. Thanks for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. So glad you're here. So um, I, I know the story because your mom, you were in school. Talk, just tell us a little story of how you got interested in, in creating stronger bones for people. Yeah, my mother was diagnosed with osteoporosis, and uh, she was really upset. When she found this out, she thought she was super healthy. And she said, well, I don't understand. Like, if you exercise, you're not supposed to have this. Well, that is a poorly explained um, thing that we have in, in, uh, in sort of medical recommendations. Like, exercise is good for, you know, there's a whole list of things. But what type of exercise? How much? How intense? Like, you get a dosage with a medication, like five milligrams of aspirin will do nothing. 5,000 will kill you, but 350 milligrams, that'll get rid of your headache. So it's like, you need to know how much of, of X that you need to get a response. So my mom was very active. She would hike. Uh, I, we, at the time, like she was in her, she was in her seventies and, and we would do well, probably every quarter, like a 20 plus mile hike together. And we bring some other people along. It wasn't just her and I, uh, but you know, like put together like a, a group from just friends, people we knew, uh, some friends from school. And then we just go on this hike and it's like waterfall. We go, like, we go there once a quarter, we go right from, backyard of my, my, uh, my parents' house in the Napa Valley. And she did all kinds of stuff. She was very active. And then she's so upset about being diagnosed with osteoporosis. And then she said, and you know, my doctor wanted to prescribe me this drug. And she goes, take a look at the side effects. And, and so I, I read the side effects and I'm like, yeah, well, I understand why you don't want to take it. And the side effects sound worse than osteoporosis. Um, <clears throat> So she didn't, she wouldn't take the medications. And I said, well, let me look into it. Like maybe I'll, I'll figure something out. And I, I don't think I was very comforting as a student at the time. Um, but what I realized very quickly was that bone health is built when we're young based on high impact activity. So little kids run and jump, you, you're like a toddler, you ever have like a toddler at your house and they sound like elephants running around <laughs> and there's little people and they're just pounding their feet on the floor. And somebody always says, why don't these kids just walk like normal people? Well, that's not what they do. They pound their feet on the floor because their, their natural biomechanics are <clears throat> such at the time that they get the maximum amount of impact through bone. So high impact forces are where you're getting the greatest forces through the body. And that's, that's universally true. Uh, gymnasts, when they do a dismount from the uneven bars, will get 10, uh, 10 times their body weight. Like, like that's, that's not on average, a little bit higher than average, but they can get that and absorb that well. And the bone grows in density because of that. So I knew gymnastics emulated a lot of things that we did when we were kids. Now, I'm not going to tell my mother who's in her seventies to go out and you know, join a gymnastics club. Cause that, that's not, you know, I wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be responsible to do, but I did think what if I could create a set of devices that could give the benefit of high impact without the risks of and I did exactly that. Uh, I prototyped it. it. It completely reversed her osteoporosis in a year and a half. 
And she now has the bones of a 30 year old and she's in her eighties. So yeah, I mean, she's still in her eighties. She doesn't look like she's 30, but she has the posture of a 30 year old. She has uh, generally like no fear of having a fragility fracture because she knows what her bone density is. It's totally normal, totally normal for a female. And that, that benchmark is at 30. That's when we hit peak bone mass, which is where it's strongest in the lives. And so uh, she gardens, she does all kinds of stuff now. Uh, a little less on the big hikes, but uh, she'll do short ones and she's still very active. And so uh, the solution really addressed her problem well. And then I opened up a clinic in the Napa Valley and started um, helping people in a similar manner. Uh, ended up gathering a bunch of data. And this was my first book, Osteogenic Loading. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, yeah, I would encourage, I don't know how many people watch this podcast or listen to it. Uh, the book's called Osteogenic Loading. It is uh, available on Amazon. However, I do not recommend reading it. It's very boring. Um, yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> videos I've done that were like five minutes long that actually covered just as much relevant ground as the book did, because this was an adaptation of my PhD dissertation. So right. like, you know, it was like kind of overly academic, like running statistical tests that I didn't need to run to show that it's the wrong statistical test. Then I run the right one, you know, because you need to show that you asked yourself all the right questions. Um, and, and the good news is physicians love the book because <laughs> it has all the detail of all the questions that they would ask a researcher because this is a hell of a lot longer than a research paper. Like it's, this is 200 pages. So, um, and there's like five pictures in it. So <laughs> you know, like, they appreciate that level of detail, especially when they're going to prescribe something. So <clears throat> there were uh, thousands of physicians that when they received it, that book, they were like, okay, I can prescribe this now. And of course, OsteoStrong is in uh, 10 different countries or 11 different countries now. And we have over 150 locations. Yeah. yeah. So, and you go to one. Which, which location do you go to? The one in uh, Mar Vista? I started at the one in Mar Vista and then I moved and I moved to, and I go, I live in Laurel Canyon. And so I'm down the hill is um, Studio City one. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Perfect. And here, Here's the thing that um, I like about OsteoStrong because I do go and it takes, well, I mean, they warm you up that you do little, you know, balancing things. So I have ridiculously good balance because I was a gymnast. I still am an acrobat um, and I, I like going upside down. I have like, I can do balance on anything pretty much. So they have you on a vibe plate to get you balanced. But, and what the test is by the time you do the exercises, you usually, most people have better balance. I I have good balance, so it's hard for me to know, but I watch other people and they have better balance. But what I like about it is that each of the, there's four different kind of machines and each machine, you can, it takes like two minutes at the most or a minute and a half before you're done. So there's four machines. So you're, you're done in 10 minutes. They do give you time to like recover if you need to, but so mm -hmm. talk about those machines. So, cause in each machine, cause it's like, I, I put on more muscle weight now because I know you and do the, your other workout thing. But I, when I was going at the beginning, I weighed 110, I weigh 119 now. And I put on just muscle. There's no like extra fat. It's crazy, yeah. but 110 and I could push with my legs. It, it, 13, 20, I think was the highest that I pushed, but I yeah. wasn't pushing something. So what's the, like, how is it working? So just like in gymnastics, you're absorbing 10 times your body more than 10 times. Okay. Yeah, you don't weigh 1300 pounds, you weigh less than 120. Right. So that's like 10 times your body weight. Right. By the way, the minimum dose response for growing bone in the hip is 4.2 multiples body weight. Right. And that's the other thing that's so cool about your devices is that they have a little, um, line and you can see when you've passed oh you've gone past that that amount of uh, where you're you're growing bone and then when you get into the super growing bone 
you know, and I, I'm always excited because it's fun when you see, oh, wow, I've gone past what is just normal growth and I'm going into good growth. So, so the, the way the machines work, can you talk about how they actually, like, what are they, they're giving you that same load like you would be if you're doing a dismount off the P-bars or what? Right, right. So we put people in a position where they would naturally absorb by impact. So for the upper body, you know, this, this type of position would, back of the hand in line with the cloud, go 120 degree angle from upper arm to lower arm. And, you know, this is where you're going to create or absorb the greatest amount of force. Mm -hmm. So by isolating that position and allowing for loading to occur, that really allows you to get to the untapped potential of your ability to absorb force. Because we don't really do that. Yeah, like, you, you kind of have I mean? to jump off a house a couple times a day to do it in a way, you know, like maybe. Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's uh, like, like, like if you want to jump, like if you wanted to create the same situation with impact, you would be jumping off of something that's taller than two and a half feet. Most people wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like so. Yeah, that's yeah, fascinating. Yeah. And, and, well, and I don't mean they wouldn't because they're lazy. I mean, they wouldn't because it wouldn't be safe. Right. People are, a lot of people are afraid. I tend to like, to, I like to fall. <laughs> I mean, I try to fall all the time just because it feels really good. And I think it is good just to <laughs> practice falling so you're not afraid of it, um, right, right. you know, as life goes on. Um, then with your mom, does she still do OsteoStrong? Uh, she does. And, and what is somebody that's not got osteoporosis or osteopenia? I didn't have, I had osteopenia um, and now I haven't checked, but I think it's getting better. I feel, I feel more something, but um, what is it for people who are already strong? Like, cause sometimes I go there and there are athletes there. And is that because you get more balance or talk about how it impacts you with the. Well, an athlete would be told to do it if they were maybe prone to fracture or they want to avoid fracture, like somebody who does a you know, contact sport, like um, mixed martial arts or is in the NFL or something like that. Um, they are inter interested in, in that. Yeah, yeah, and I th it, it also seems like when you said your mom has better posture, like it has a capacity to because it strengthens the the things you strengthen are the legs, the hips, the spine, the shoulder girdle, and what else? Every, the, everything. Not the head though, or does the head get him? Well, the skull actually does not lose the head, and it's not a long bone, so you can't load the skull. Right. Well, I can. <laughs> well, right. I mean, you, you can, but there's no there's no adaptation. Like, right. Okay. Your, so your okay. skull is you know, the hardest bone in the body, and it'll always be that way. It doesn't lose bone mass. Oh, that's so cool. So every other thing. And what about things like hands and feet? Can they still get it when they're using, when you're holding on or you're pushing with yeah, your- Absolutely. Any distortion, you know, compression, tension, or torsion uh, in any bone of the body is going to, at, at the appropriate low, will elicit the, the, adaptive response i love that so much so um wow that's so cool and you know i want there's so many people that i want to go there because it's just so first of all everybody that usually owns these things that are fun people from what i've seen and it's a great mm -hmm. franchise i'd say it's a better franchise if you're going to do it than like yeah fast food but um, oh, yeah. I mean, fast food, you're like poisoning people. Yeah, yeah. This is helping people. It's a it's a franchise that helps people, and the people are usually really sweet who work there. I mean, I've only been to like I've been to them in other cities as well. So, um, every, but everybody has been positive and fun. So it's a yeah. great energy, and um, yeah, yeah. And and I have just seen like the first time I did it, I my a friend of mine told me about it. I immediately made an appointment. I went and I did it. And that night when I was at home, and I'm very attuned to my, my physiology, I'm very kinesthetic, I felt like I could feel energy in the middle of my 
especially my um, calf and, and thigh bones. And I was like, wow. And it really felt, it was such a fascinating energy because it felt like it was inside the bones. I don't know if it was, but that's what I was feeling. It is. It is. Actually, that's where the growth happens. It doesn't, the growth doesn't happen on the outside. The outside is where the oldest bone is. So a bone cell begins, it's called an osteoblast. It starts in the middle and then migrates outward. That's awesome to know. Yeah. That makes total yeah. sense. Yeah. And what, what was your study? Like when you were doing this, you were getting your, you said it was for your PhD. What, what is your background? A PhD is in biomedical engineering. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and and the I and engineering is so cool because engineering is how how do things work and how do we make it better is basically what I've seen. There's such an art to engineering that I'll I think is that. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I interviewed another engineer on the show, probably many, probably a few, but one of them is a guy that um, is creating green energy and. And I just have a lot of engineering friends and it's just so interesting because that mind is, okay, how does this work and how do we make it better? And that just feels so, so right. I mean, it seems like such a great thing for all kids to have some understanding of, you know, for just yeah. life, Sure. just to have that kind of way of thinking. So a lot of people don't even know that they would have osteoporosis or osteopenia like your mom, she was healthy. How do people, like, what do they have to do to get tested to find out um, to do that? And then should, should men, can men get it as well? As well? And I'm asking this, I kind of know, but just for the audience. Sure. One out of three women uh, will have a fragility re related fracture, meaning they have osteoporosis and they'll break from it. Um, and the, the problem is, especially like with a hip fracture, if you're over the age of 50, you have a 50% chance of death within one year of a hip fracture. And it's not because of the hip fracture itself, it's because of the complications related to the hip fracture. Like, you know, you wow. can't move around, you get pneumonia, you die in the hospital. And uh, people are fairly unaware, though it's getting better, um, of the risks of fragility fracture, but uh, it's a lousy disease, and, and also you have to keep in mind that the longer people live, and we are living longer, um, the longer people live, the more diseases of deconditioning that they, they are potentially subject to, meaning that what ends up being the biggest health challenges with some of these older people that we have now is just they're just falling apart because they're not using their body yes uh, so yeah and osteoporosis is a disease of deconditioning so if you recondition the skeletal system it's going to be just as good as it was when you were a kid yeah that is so Fabulous. And it makes so much sense because I've, I've seen everything else. You know, I've seen my muscles regenerate. I've seen, you know, everything has regenerated in my life pretty much. And so that makes so much sense about the bones. I can't wait to get more tests and the way people do it. You can get a bone density test and you can get a DEXA scan. Those are the two, or is there something else that I don't know of? Uh, the blood markers are, is the best test. Oh, the blood so, markers. Yeah. You get tested for, um, they test you for catabolic activity in bone and anabolic activity in bone. So all tissues of the body have a metabolic rate. There's, there's tissue that's breaking down in order to be replaced. And then there's tissue that's new, that's building. Uh, what you want in your bone is you want a higher anabolic rate than catabolic rate. So when you're a kid, here's your anabolic rate, here's your catabolic rate. So you're building more than you're losing right and this is a rate like every day the, so when you get to 30 years old it does this you're gaining just as much as you're losing and then when you're over 30 this happens and you start losing more than gaining and what and are what other what it does is this go ahead sorry it, it, osteostrong will end up reversing yeah 
And, and we see that in the blood markers. And there was just a study that was published in, uh, mm, let's see, the, I think it's like the Medical Journal of Aerospace Research. Or, oh, because um, you need it. If you're up in air, there's no, no gravity. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was done specifically to instruct astronauts or inform anyone who's working in space program that, you know, as long as these stimuli exist, the astronaut can maintain or even grow uh, bone mass. Wow, and so are they bringing the same kind of equipment that you make in your, in your Ostrostrong uh, locations up in space or potentially or? Like, how, how would you do, if you're up in space for a year, do you like, how would you, how do you do it? <laughs> um, Sorry, but that's, I'm so fascinated. It's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they need the same kind of axial compression that we're providing at osteostrong locations, but it's got to be a little different, you know, for a, for an in-flight application, especially when there's no gravity and there's, number of ways to achieve that and uh we'll see that's awesome that would be so cool that'd be so cool you know and they could come back and be like wow i grew bone density while i was up in that outer space you know and then they've they've whole, they had that whole time thing okay so that's really cool you've also created something else that i love called the x3 bar um yep. i love that thing it has made me stronger yeah. and i'm a i'm strong yeah. But it's made me stronger and that's really awesome. And I'll just share with you and with the audience. Before mm -hmm. I met the X3 bar, I was a I was doing um private coaching with a Cirque du Soleil coach. And I was doing like three to four hours a day, five to six days a week. So I was strong. Then I had a hand injury, couldn't couldn't work out for a year. Then I did the X3 and um within five or six weeks of doing the X3, my, my back was stronger than with the, with the Cirque du Soleil coach and my whole body started to get stronger within, I think like within eight weeks, I was pa way past what the, I'd gotten with the Cirque du Soleil coach and my hand grip, hand therapy, you do all this hand stuff because I severed some tendons and the, yeah. the hand things were nothing compared to doing the, the X3. My hand grip right. went right back to normal within a few, yeah. few months. A lot of therapy interventions are just, they're great on day one, but they're weak. And they don't, it's like they'll get your hand moving, but the ability to move and the ability to apply strength are two different things. That's, that's exactly right. And can you, yeah. can we go back a minute more? Are there other things that people can do now as they're older to create more anabolic I'm assuming that with osteostrong, it creates the anabolic more. What else creates more anabolic versus a cata the catabolic? Um, well, I mean, if there really was anything, I would have wrote a book about that. Because <laughs> let me tell you, coming up with, uh, with um, a set of medical devices that cost $200,000, that wasn't my first choice. I would have much rather made something simple. Uh, you know, like in, in the cost of the clinic, like it's one of those clinics needs to see a lot of people to cover that cost. Right. Right. You know, yeah. That makes sense. Know, if I could have made it in a more economical way, or if I just could have written a book and fixed everybody's problem, they wouldn't have to go to a center. I would have done that. But, uh, such is not the case. Like you really need incredible forces to go through bone before they're stimulated and they can pull in minerals and recalcify. That makes total sense. So back to the X3. So you created that. How was it that you assessed that one out? So the X3, so just for the listeners that don't know the difference, osteostrong is for bone density. X3 is for strength. Uh, and, and sort of body composition, the shape of your body, uh, nothing will reshape your body faster. But it was, it was the osteostrong, it was doing the research, uh, you know, for the osteostrong devices, where I realized, like, I had been lifting weights for years, and I looked at the strength differences 
with people who are just, you know, ready to absorb impact. Remember I told you about that 120 degree angle right here sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, when I looked at that geometry of how people absorb force in their body, I, I was like, wow, like weightlifting is awful for what we're trying to get done. Like, now I know some people think like the practice of fitness is weightlifting and they just want to lift weights. Well, that's inefficient. Uh, it's sort of like, I mean, nobody tries to ride a horse on the freeway just because <laughs> they like horses. Like, that's not how we, that's not transportation anymore. Horses are now uh, for entertainment. They're not for travel. So, um, and, and that's kind of how I view weightlifting. And then I wrote the book, which is a Wall Street Journal bestseller, Weightlifting is a Waste of Time. Uh, yes. Such a good yeah. title. <laughs> it, it, yeah, well, it's accurate. It's because I, I demonstrate in that book the limitations of weightlifting. Now, is weightlifting, it is like the practice of weightlifting going to give you no results? No. Uh, there'll, there'll be some results, but your body has a massive capability to recondition itself, build muscle, gain speed, increase reflexes. And the research that talks about variable resistance, which is what X3 is, blows regular training away. Like you would not lift a weight if you understood this. And, and uh, there's been a lot more research since X3 came out. And I think part of that research was sort of to see if X3 is wrong or if it's right. And every time there's a study, it shows that variable resistance is absolutely dominant over standard weightlifting. And so most of what you see in the gym, I wouldn't touch. It's garbage. Like it's just a waste of time compared to what the proper variable resistance stimulus would do um and and it's and it's because of all these observations that were made while developing the osteostrong devices like humans are so much stronger in these impact ready ranges of motion than they are in the weaker ranges of motion but when you lift weights you pick the weight based on where you're weakest not where you're strongest so the weight is so light, it's hardly doing anything to you. Right. And you can't yeah. lift more than your weakest range can pick up. That's right. That's, yeah. that's, like, that's why it makes so much sense. Water people, like, they don't have a choice. Right. They have to pick the weight they pick because they need to be able to move it through all ranges of motion. Well, what happens if I'm seven times stronger here than I am here? Well, why don't I have a weight that changes? Because that's what X3 ultimately is. So now I can use an appropriate weight here, an appropriate weight here, and an appropriate weight at my at where my arms are extended, so that I can exhaust all ranges of motion and all of the tissue completely, which is something you can never do with a weight. Right. And that is something that, as a person who uses the X3, and as a person who used to do mostly body weight stuff because gymnastics is mostly body weight mm -hmm. and we used to work out at the beach you know like climb ropes and stuff yeah. handstands you mean like, the like Santa Monica like the pier yeah uh, okay. yeah uh, south of the pier south of the pier yeah with a bunch of friends some of my acrobatic my old acrobatic partner and a bunch of like uh, the guy who created P P90X Tony Horton was there and then I, so I used to do all that stuff, but I watched everybody, including me got, you know, their shoulders would get hurt because we're doing things, you know, we're doing the rings and we're doing, you know, uh, front levers where you go parallel with the ground uh, on a high bar. And I was strong, but everybody, everybody was having shoulder issues, um, you know, knee issues, this stuff. And with the X3, my shoulders have gotten stronger. I feel like the, the, and I've had shoulder surgery on this shoulder and I've dislocated both shoulders um, before. And I feel like this, like the, the, the ball and socket in my shoulder is, is stronger. And it I is. think it's from the X3. So can you talk yeah. about how it's doing that? Yeah. Uh, when you build muscle around a joint, the joint has more integrity. 
Also, the tendons and ligaments become thicker and more powerful based on the compression when you're in the impact ready range of motion. So there's similar logic in the two products um, so that we're hyper loading where you're strongest and then we're deloading where you are weaker because that's the appropriate load at the appropriate position. Yeah, that makes sense. total yeah. makes sense to me. So what you're saying, just if it didn't make sense to anybody else, is that you want the strongest amount of weight when you're at your strongest and the weakest amount of weight where, when you're at your weakest, all in the same range. So in well, one- no, Well, not necessarily no. weakest, weakest for you. Right, yeah, yeah, in your weakest. Right, That's, got yeah. it all relative to the person who's doing it. Of course, yeah, because mm -hmm. I got the feeling, I'm not sure, but I got the feeling you're just a little stronger than I am. Um, <laughs> um, and the other thing I've noticed with X3 is that a lot of people who do it, they will say things like, you know, a lot of the pain in my body went away. And I think it's because, you know, we're not trained. I don't, as a, even as a gymnast, as an acrobat, my back was never strong like it is with the X3. My back is so strong. I don't need to practice sitting up. I just, it's, it happens now. It's just effortless now. <laughs> because of the way the X3 works. So that makes, that makes a lot of people who have the kind of pains that come from either overextension or uh, kyphotic things or mm -hmm. stuff like that, when they do the X3, if they do it properly, they can actually, the pain can go, to, can go away. Mm -hmm. Which I think is really phenomenal. And does, yeah. do, do the, um, because the, X, the X3 works with stabilizer muscles too. So when you're in this kind of position, let's say, and, you're, and you start to shake, is that getting the, the actual, the tiny muscles in the joints as well? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Thank you. Now, reflexive activation of smaller muscles that stabilize the body also upregulates growth hormone, which is considered like, like that's, that's part of like an anti-aging protocol. So it makes your skin look younger, it makes you lose weight faster. Uh, there's a lot of metabolic benefits to a natural increase in growth hormone. Right. And I know people that take the kind where they shoot it up and then they get problems later. And I don't think I would ever want to do something like that. I think there's so much benefit. What you're saying when you're getting that, when you go, when you go into the, um, what you were talking about, muscular fatigue at each range of your of your exercise, the muscular fatigue, it's something that you, I've never experienced it before like I experienced it with the X3 because you just don't have that opportunity. You're either in it or you're out of it when you've got weights or your body weight, you know, and with this, you can make smaller and smaller um, movements and your body and the body will start to, the whole body or, or the part that you're using starts to shake and that's the part where you're making the, the human growth hormone. Is that what you're saying? That's right. Yeah. So you guys, you want to get, you get to fatigue because <laughs> in the human growth hormone makes you sleep better at night, does make your skin better. Okay. I think it makes your brain better. You know, I think it has it so many. Body yeah. Cognitive. yeah, it has so much goodness to it. And so, especially when it's endogenous human growth hormone, HGH, human growth hormone. Um, that that's wonderful. And then what else should I ask you that you want me to share about? How's your, how's your mom doing with everything else? Like she, you, it sounds like right. you guys had a good relationship growing up. Yeah, too. they'll do. Yeah. Yeah. She's fantastic. She, uh, yeah, she's in her mid eighties and doesn't miss out on anything. Yeah. And I've noticed moms seem to be really important for people yeah. who care about other people. You know, if yeah. I think if you have a mom that cares about you, you tend to be more caring and you want to do things that benefit other people. Yeah, you so, only give. Yeah. So thank you to all the moms out there and appreciate mm -hmm. that. Is there anything else you want to share about before we say goodbye? Because I think what you're saying is so exciting and it makes me so happy. And I I can verify it in my own experience that at least with the Osteo Strong and with the X3 bar, what you've created is genius. I mean, it's. The, Thanks. It's, yeah, genius, really genius. I love it. It's enhanced my life. My body is stronger than I've ever been. People tell me I'm, they, they think I'm in my 20s. I'm not. 
<laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah, nobody tells me I'm in my 20s. <laughs> it's usually uh, from behind when they say it, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, no, hey, the jokes are free. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, um, I think these are two things that can really uh, help people age gracefully and kind of reverse a lot of what we call what we mistakenly call aging which is really just deconditioning you can yeah. recondition so many things and uh and that's uh, i'd like people to be focused on that instead of focused on oh my god i'm falling apart and i have fraternity brothers that tell me that you know they're pre-diabetic and they got some heart problems and they go well i guess we're just getting old and you know, I'm 45 and I'm like, well, how come I don't have any of these problems? Like none of them. Right. And you know, and I'm, I'm like a sample size of one, but let's look at a couple I, hundred thousand users of X3. How come they don't have those problems either? Right. Right. I don't have any, I don't have any issues. I'm healthier than I've ever been. Right. And others, you'll, see that, you'll see that with yeah. X3 users and especially with the, um, the osteostrong users, like that's that's mostly like there's some side benefits to that. I guess side effects you call it. Um, you know, like I, I hear people uh, both both products will give you better posture. So I, I have better posture. It's amazing. No, not really, because most people have a weak trapezius muscle, so the shoulders kind of slump forward. Well, that doesn't happen to somebody who is properly con conditioned in, in their back right you know, you don't have a back to support you know your shoulders they slump forward and you begin a more aggressive kyphotic curve and that becomes a dysfunction later on in life right and kyphotic um, means hunchback just in case mm -hmm. you know that's the people who are walking yeah, yeah right. walking yeah, where they're looking has, at the ground a kyphotic curve, that's a natural curve of the back no but it becomes really exaggerated to see people hunch forward where they almost have to look up to look straight ahead right like that that's when it becomes compromising right and yeah we avoid all that yeah and even reverse it right and that's so interesting because so you, you mentioned the trapezius and they're very important but also the rhomboid is something that i think a lot of people have no awareness of and I have, I make everybody who comes over to my house do the X3 with me. I don't make them. I just invite them with, with passion. And so then they do it and then they, they buy it usually. But, um, but a lot of them at the beginning, men and women, even people who work out, they don't have, they can't, they don't know how to discern that muscle that brings the, the shoulder blades together, which are the trapezius and the, and the rhomboid. And they don't even have it. They can't even activate it. And I'm like, say, pull your pull your, your scapula together and they don't even know what that is. So it takes some time. And if you, if you decide to get the X3, if you're listening to this and you say, oh, I'm gonna get the X3, recognize that it might take a little time to, to even discern how to do it in proper form. Yeah, it does take some time. Well, you're, you're a member of the user's forum, which is daily entertainment. Uh, <laughs> funny questions. And Boy, there's some people reading instructions. I right? like, you know, just, people just don't like doing that anymore. We have video instructions and they won't even do that. And just kind of jump right into it and invent their own ineffective exercises and ways that they could potentially hurt themselves. Like, I mean, I realize your iPhone didn't come with a manual, but also it has the ability to put words up on the screen in front of you. But you should probably pay a little more attention when you get a resistance training product that puts very high loads on the body like you know like just watch the instructional videos it takes about five minutes yeah for it takes about five it's minutes right. for day. yeah and then until you get That's it important. right and the x3 the other thing we didn't even mention it only takes 10 minutes a day sometimes 12 if you get enthusiastic but um <laughs> uh, but it's like it's so efficient Efficient. That's the other thing. When I worked with the Cirque du Soleil coach, or when I used to work with the my acrobatic friends and all that stuff, we'd work out for four, five, six hours on the beach, 
and mm. th two, three hours, um, you know, with the Cirque du Soleil coach. And now it's 10 minutes and then I can do whatever I want to do. And it's, I just have so much more energy too, because when your muscles are stronger, you, it, they create more energy. Yeah. You don't, you don't run out of enthusiasm to do a lot of physical things when the muscles are strong because what used to be hard isn't hard anymore. Right. Yeah. Things become easier. Like I used to have a problem to just have good posture. I've been meditating for 30 years. You're always supposed to sit up straight. I never could do it, but now I, I don't even, now there's no effort and it is effortless. So part of what I like with the X3 is that it, it makes, it makes things like posture effortless. It makes things like, like picking it up something heavy. By posture. It right. should be automatic. So like I see all these products out there and I don't like bashing other products. So I, I mean, I won't mention any names or anything. Uh, I don't bash people either. Only disproven scientific ideas is really the only thing I go after. Uh, I think it's really like low class when people like go and attack uh, like another scientist or something. Like don't go after the, the messenger. Go after the message. Anyway. Right. Do the research uh, yourself if you want to see. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can debate the research, but they, they usually attack the person because they know they won't win the debate. Right. It's an ad hominem attack. It's, it's, it's like, you know, instead of saying so-and-so, you know, like this is, these are bad ideas and here's why it's like, well, that guy, like, you know, he does some strange or he's, you know, he didn't, he didn't go to a good enough school or something like that, you know, like, okay. So, but what about what he's saying? Is it true or not? Like, you know, they, they try and derail the conversation. Yes. Um, I don't even know how I got on this. What was I talking about? You were talking about there's all these products that are other things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Posture like should be effortless. I like was sort of rubber band thing that like pulls your shoulders back. Oh, no, those are terrible. Like, why would you think that's a good idea? That's so awful. I like, had a physical like, therapist no give me those and it was, band. it worsened it. Sorry. Of course, right, because it encourages weakness. It, it would be like using crutches if you had nothing wrong with your legs. Right. Like after some period of time, guess what? You're going to have problems walking because you've been on crutches. So why would you do that? Like, like these posture assist things, uh, they should never exist. It, it's about your own musculature. Right. Like it musculature is supposed to give you your posture not some wearable rubber band thing. <laughs> I totally agree. And having experienced both, I, I vote for the muscle. But the other thing you had said once, and just correct me if I'm wrong, or, or you can maybe enhance it. You said people cannot grow muscles stronger than their bones. Because if they try to lift something <laughs> that goes beyond the bone, the bone is going to break. So their muscles will shut off to Before protect that happens. Right. Right. It's called neural inhibition. So talk a little bit more about neural inhibition. Well, what I would say is, you know, when someone would say, is this, you know, these you, we're using with both products, we use very high forces. Um, most people don't realize if you want the body to change, there's no getting away from the head. You have to put significant force through the body before it is able to change. And I tell people because it was with osteostrong, you are the creator of the force. So right. there is no force coming from anywhere. It comes from inside you. Right. And so I ask people, can you squeeze a fist hard enough to break your own finger? You know, and they usually look at their fists and they go, I don't think I can. Right. You cannot because of neural inhibition, because your own central nervous system will stop you from creating a load that will damage itself. Talk about the brilliance of the body. But that's right. another reason why if you want to be physically stronger, even if you don't have weak bones, if you do go to someplace like OsteoStrong, your bones could get stronger and that could be the added thing that gets you to a stronger muscular right. place, correct? Right. Mo most young people don't have a problem with it. It's. Uh more of a postmenopausal problem because when you do bone density examinations on like NFL players, their bone density is sky high. 
Like they don't. That makes they're sense. Not yeah, same with basketball players. Um, swimmers have very low bone density. Right, because there's no weight. That's right. Yeah, they're that not. Makes sense. While the muscles are performing, they're not dealing with gravity in the same way in the water as out of the water, so they miss out on a lot of high impact. Yeah. Um, and like, oh, I, I would, I would encourage any swimmer. In fact, um, Wilma Wong is a a swimming instructor for Olympic athletes. Yes. She, she you probably met her. Like, I just, she, I she, just she, talked to her uh, just over chat because I like what she's doing. I think she's phenomenal. Wonderful woman. Yeah. Right. Brings all her swimmers uh, to Oscar Strong, and they use X three also. Because like she knows that you can't fully develop the human body in the water. Like we're not fish. We're not supposed to be in the water all the time. And we have to deal with gravity and ground reaction forces, which, which means the body as it relates to the ground, how we hit the ground, how we push ourselves off the ground, how we get up off the ground. Uh, all of that's a whole field of study based on human versus ground wow and, uh, yeah yeah and uh, she's very advanced like a lot of swim coaches are not as far along as she is in in sort of understanding that and understanding that the stronger and faster uh, a swimmer is on the on the land they're going to be able to translate that to the water yes of course uh, one other thing I want to mention about uh, the X3 bar that I really like is that if you do it all at once, meaning you you do it and then as soon as you catch your breath, you do it in the next um, the next exercise and then you get your breath and then you do the next. So you're having like a 30 second or a minute rest. You get the HIIT, the high intensity interval training while doing the X3 bar. So you're getting muscular strength. You're getting that kind of cardiovascular training, it seems like. Um, so I'm just, I'm not trying to sell it, but I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. I mean, it's like so good. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's the only <laughs> thing I do. Like uh, people look at me, I, I get I get asked for like an autograph when I'm in a grocery store and I'm like, who do you think I am? And they're like, I don't know, but you're something. <laughs> and, you know, like, like they're like, are you in the NFL? You an MMA fighter? And I'm like, no, I'm a scientist. <laughs> like huh yeah like, and then, you know, then they, they find me on instagram and they're like oh yeah you're like, well, okay. like so uh, yeah you are whatever <laughs> and so uh, yeah yeah but it, um yeah the, the, and that was interesting because all this muscle i put on i put on after turn 40 and uh that's kind of unheard of yeah i got a cuter ass and I'm over, I'm older than you. And it got cuter from this X3 bar. So hey, that's awesome. <laughs> you want a cuter ass? <laughs> X3. Okay, so um, great. Anything else that you want to share before we say goodbye? Because this is fantastic. I love it. I love how bright you are. I love how you want to help people. I love how you found things that actually do help people, you know, that I, that I can attest from my own experience that um, I feel stronger in my bones. I haven't gotten a recent bone density test, but my bone density had gone up from, I had one, I had a bone density test like 20 years ago and I was like one point less than I should be. And now, now after doing X3, I didn't do X3 all through the quarantine because it was, or the, not the X3, the osteostrong, my bone density still went up after having done it for like a, like a year before the, um, mm -hmm. the quarantine. And then, um, so I just haven't tested it again, but I tested it right, right at the beginning before I started the OsteoStrong again. So, but it had even still gone up, even though I hadn't used it for the two, one and a half years or two years or something like that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's yeah. better if you do it consistently, but you know, sometimes offices close. <laughs> well, when it comes to bone density, when you build bone, so bone has a much slower metabolic rate. So it's actually slower to build. But when you have it, it takes you about 30 years to lose it. Something to think about. 
Yeah, that's kind of. Yeah, amazing. nothing, nothing that you do to develop the body has a thirty-year knock-on effect. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why when we reach peak bone mass at, at thirty years of age, it begins to go down, and people don't tend to not have any problems with their bone density until they're like sixty or seventy. Right. So if you did Austria Strong in your 30s, it's going to be okay. But if you do it in your 40s, it's going to keep you good. Yeah, for, for much longer, you know, maybe, maybe 30, maybe like even like way beyond that. I love Depending it. On how you make that, that sort of second peak bone mass. Right. And the other thing, so the Austria Strong, you go for 10 minutes plus recovery time and warm up time once a week mm -hmm. on average. And with the X3, you do it 10 minutes, five or six days a week. That's right. So you're like really good time management too, which I like. So, <laughs> you know, I didn't create anything to be convenient. It just so happens that when the body receives a stimulus, the more intense the stimulus, the greater the response of the body. Right. That's why it can be so efficient. That makes so much sense because you're That's doing why it. It's like, the body doesn't want an hour of, you know, something that's difficult to handle and then respond because it's not going to be intense. Right. It's sort of like, do, do marathon runners grow any muscle? No, they lose muscle. They lose muscle very quickly uh, because their body's trying to cannibalize all tissues that are not being used in an effect to take the human body these great distances. Whereas when you do very intense strength training, like X3, X3 is way more intense than regular weightlifting. Uh, your body responds so quickly and the shape of your body changes. And like you were saying, women look much more feminine. I, I really want any, any female listener, like don't worry, you're gonna get, get like lumpy looking or be, look like me with a wig. Not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, like you were like, yeah, I really want to do this, but am I going to look like him? Because <laughs> well, yeah. John, um, I thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, being so helpful. You know, since I've had the X3, you've been super helpful. If I've had a question, I really appreciate that. Not just you, but that whole X3 bar users group is helpful. And, um, and then everybody just, yeah, everybody in that group is so sweet and helpful. I will say one more thing about human growth hormone, because I did coach to not, I didn't coach them in the X3. I coached a couple of people that are in the X3 group, but in how to let go of stress and pain and fatigue, emotional pain and fatigue. And they're, they're both men and they both, they both had been doing the X3 for a year and they were strong and their, their wives were very happy. And then they let go of stress. And within like five or six weeks, they both started getting even more muscle. And just, you know, I didn't do like a whole study. It's just two guys. But it seems like when you don't have stress, which is why I teach it, why you don't, when you don't have stress, you have higher yeah. testosterone if you're a man and higher HGH your body can make because it's not, it, stress lowers testosterone, stress lowers yeah. HGH. But yeah, like you got to let go of stuff. Yeah. And you know, I love that. I love that so much because, because there's so many things you can also improve your brain. You know, people think, oh, your brain is going to get declined. It's just, it's just not using it. I I'm still learning languages and lots of other things. And my brain seems to get be getting better. I've, I got two, I've gotten three brain scans and my brain has consistently gotten better over the last several years. So everything, just when you were talking about age decline, doesn't come from actual decline. It comes from deconditioning. Yeah. It's the same with the brain. It's the same with eyesight. It's the same with the body, with sexuality, right. with everything. Everything can be regenerated and, and healed. So, um, well, I just love you. I love what you're doing. Um, congratulations on your new wedding and marriage and all of that. That's fantastic. Your wife is gorgeous. Thank and you. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what I like? I can hear in your voice when you talk about her, you get a softness in your voice. You know, you get out of your head into your heart and it's just beautiful and it really touches me. So, bravo. Yep, awesome. <laughs> awesome, well, thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you for joining Stories We Love.
And you can get the rest of the shows at storiesweloveshow.com. And please tune in again because we'll have some more extraordinary people. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you.